Well, as you can see here, we got a new tool in the workshop. We recently picked up a Beambox Pro from the company Flux, and we bought it from Matter Hackers. And I'll show some pictures here of the box it came in. It was boxed in two different boxes. The outside box did have some damage on it, but the inside was just fine. So it, it held up pretty well. Uh, we've had this for about a month now, and I'm going to talk about how it works, some of the operations of it, and some of the issues we originally had when we set it up and how we resolve them. First up, I'll give you a quick overview of the machine itself. You got the power button, you got the touch display here, and the main big bed unit here. Let's lift this up, and inside you have the, the bed, which you can raise and lower by turning this knob. Um, you have the XY gantry here, and as you can see, this little piece here is how you determine how high the Z is off of the bed, off of the material you're, you're actually lasering. Everything was pretty much set up the way it needed to be to run. Um, again, I will talk about the two issues we had. So the first thing we did was we had to obviously fill it up with some water. So on the back side here, this, this little plate here, this cover will flip up and back there, I'll show a picture of it. There's a big laser tube back there and we put in some distilled water. And after we put it in there, we had to run the pump using the interface to do so, to make sure it was full and there was no air in the system. That was pretty easy to do and we didn't have any issues with that. So the first thing, let's turn the machine on. It takes a little bit to start up. I'll come in over here on the display. You can see the bed is lighted, which is nice. Pardon all the glare. And this thing can run with Wi-Fi or a hard Ethernet cable. We chose to do the Ethernet cable because I have a a port right underneath the bed, on the, underneath this little shelf that I built for it. So I built this little rack here, a uh, rack, a table for it. So that's some two by fours and some three quarter inch ply, and it's plenty sturdy. All right, so when it first boots up, you get this display here, your warning, and then you get that. You get the start, you get the maintain area, the app, the network settings, and the machine settings itself. First, I'm going to show you the interface. The big button on top to start, if you tap that, it takes you into the built-in memory, or if you have a USB thumb drive, you can plug into the back if you want to start projects that way. We have not really used that method. We've just been using the built-in software on a computer to send commands to it to actually start the jobs. The maintain, as you can see, it homed itself really quick. And this allows you to jog the machine, any of the accesses you want. So I'll show. And then you can just press home. And then it goes back to home. You can also do settings with the camera. And I believe these are power and speed modifiers. We have not tried those, but I believe those should up the power or the speed or decrease it just a little bit, even though you have the G-code set to a certain setting. Um, the spot where you can test the motors, the air pump, the pump, this is where we ran the pump after we put water in it. You can test the fans, um, turn the backlight on and off, which I'm not sure why you do that, because you can't see anything when you do that. Um, the camera, the work LED lights, and you can pulse the laser too, just if you want to test it to see if it's working. All right, one of the issues we had was we had intermittent problems with this end stop sensing the metal here. The way we fixed it to be more reliable was we actually placed a washer and a binder clip and just clipped it right here. Because if you watch the little LED, when I put this close, the LED goes out. So when this was trying to home, it was failing to trip the switch and it would just crash into the end here. 
sometimes it works without it and sometimes it fails. It's just, it's right on that threshold where it's not reliable. So what we found is if we put this and clip it right on there, it seems to fix the problem for us. Now hopefully they can have an updated design that puts more meat, more metal here to help trigger this Z-stop, but that's how we solved it anyway. So I'll give you a close-up of what it looks like when we put the washer on there. So now when we move this and watch the LED go out right there. So that was one issue. The second issue we had was when we initially turned this machine on, everything started fine. And then we launched the, the software on the computer and the first thing it asked us to do was to calibrate the cameras. Well, when we did that, we were getting an unknown error, as it said. And I'll show on the screen here what the actual error was. We fought with it and fought with it, and we could not get it to work. I updated the firmware, all those things, nothing fixed it. We even tried launching the G-code from this menu, and it still failed. And we literally got the error to show up on this screen, too. So we knew it was something with the machine itself and not the software communicating with the machine. So how we fixed it was we went into machine and we just went to reset to factory. And after we did that, everything worked just fine. So I'm not sure why it wasn't factory settings when we got it you know, from the factory, but that resolved the issue for us. Uh, I have not updated the firmware since we did that, so I don't know if it says there which version it is. Yeah, 3.2.6. And you can see we have 10 hours. So that's kind of cool too. It also shows you how much time you have on your, your laser. So we have 10 hours, with just over 10 hours of use on it. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how we calibrate the camera. So it says to place a sheet of paper in the top left portion of the bed. We'll do that. Close down the lid, and let me get you a better angle here. Verify that is still tight, back and down, feels pretty good, slip that up, get you out of the way, there you go, alright, let's start the test. Alright, so now at the computer. I am going, I have launched Beam Studio, and if you go under Machines, and go Calibrate Camera, and say yes, we've done this. I've noticed that occasionally this, even though we do the calibration, that this will not be perfect every time we do it. It'll like move like this, so I'm not sure if it just resets itself each time you do the cam camera calibration or if it gets off over time. So you might need to do this more than once if you're doing a lot of projects, potentially. Move this x and the negative and the more negative and then increase the y. And the goal is to get this inside of the square. That looks pretty close to me. And next, and it's done. So it's as simple as that. 
That's one thing we've noticed is that occasionally sometimes this will just kind of fall down on its own, but it's never been a problem if it does fall down. I'm not sure if there's a better way to do that or if they can make this slightly stiffer so it doesn't just move on its own. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Um, I will do a further overview of the software itself. Um, we'll do some more experiments with different materials and we show you how we've been cutting things and using some acrylics. We've cut some rubber to make a stamp out of it. Um, even got some of these little like dog tags. We can show you how we've been doing those. But yeah, if you have any suggestions of anything you'd like to see us try, we'll give it a shot. If you guys have any tips or tricks on how you got yours to work or any problems you've had and how you solved them, please put them in the comments down below. We'll help each other out. And that's all for today. So we'll see you next time.